when you're listening to sound reproduction. Uh, the placement of the drivers is extremely important to get uh, the sound as it was when it was recorded. You guys familiar with the subwoofer trick to do the subwoofer crawl? Mm. Well, the subwoofer crawl is kind of interesting. Mm. What you do is you place your subwoofer in a room uh, where you're going to be seated at, like the couch or the chair that you're going to listen to music in. This is in a home environment. You place the sub there, and then you move around the room until you find the spot to where the sub is the most intense. The sound is the most intense, right? When you find that spot, you then move your subwoofer to that spot and then go back to your sitting position where you had the subwoofer at and it'll, it'll be the most intense. You found the sweet spot in that room for that sub to sound the best at your sitting position because it works both ways. The important part is that replacement of that subwoofer is important to get the sound uh, optimal at your sitting location. Now you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. What kind of music do you like? Do you like a concert environment? Is that your, is that your idea of the best experience for music? Most of your SQ guys will talk about this. You know, a concert has all the musical instruments up front. The wall of sound is coming from in front of you. That's true. However, not everyone enjoys the sound of a concert. What if your favorite sonic experience is uh, maybe at a church or at a nightclub um, or a bar? You know, all of these places have completely different environments. And the sound and the way that it's uh, reproduced or produced to you is going to be completely different with these different size spaces and different, you know, configurations. So in a nightclub, for example... You may have sound all around you. There may be speakers in every corner of the room. It may sound like you're wrapped in sound. Uh, same thing with a, a dance or, a, you know, or a club. They usually have some speakers by the DJ, but they've also usually got speakers located elsewhere so that the room is just full of sound. And if that's the kind of sound you're looking for, then having speakers around you is exactly what you do to reproduce that environment. Having said that, uh, if you're listening to music where everything is coming from in front of you, then you're still going to get reflections from sound in the back. And what's interesting about this is, if you are if you set up a recording to record something happening in a room, right? You put a microphone down on this X in the room. And you have the person stand in this spot and sync from this spot in the room and record into that mic. Later on, if you put the perfect stereo, you put the perfect speaker right there where that person was at, at the same height that everything, and played it, played that recording back, it would sound like the original recording. Because you're getting all the same reverberations all around in the room. Uh, so ultimately, you don't get to listen to the recording back in the same environment it was recorded in. You have to take what you've had, which is your car, your living room, or your parking lot, or whatever you're trying to play music into. So it's not always as simple as doing that. But having a hard and fast rule about it's got to be all front stage, that's, that's not really how I feel, because... Uh, it depends on you, you know, the person. To me, SQ or sound quality is how to get the music to sound best to the person who's listening to it. You're not trying to make a specific group of people happy. You're trying to make yourself happy. Um, 
And if done right, you can do a system quite well that has a nice, good soundstage with rear fill. You could even do it with full powered rear speakers. The only thing is you need to make sure that you're time aligning so that those drivers in the back get sound to your ears at the same time as the ones in the front. So you got to have some time alignment uh, to get them all centered up. Uh, and uh, you could totally get a good sound stage. It's going to be a different sound stage. It ain't going to be uh, the same sound stage as what this group of people feel like it should be. It's going to be different, but it will be a distinct sound stage. And the thing about being in a club is also it's not time aligned. So you got a you know, big old box over here, a big old box over here, and you got one way back there and one way over yonder and one over there and they're all different distances from you, and they're not time aligning that signal to your position in the club. So you're getting a specific sound, and that may be what you're looking for. You know, the whole point is, uh, for me, an S quality, sound quality or SQ for me is to make it sound some way that takes you away. When you listen to the music, it, it takes you somewhere. It allows you to remember a thing or to experience a thing or or brings an emotional response from you. You know, it creates an emotional state that the song just takes you somewhere else. And, and, and that, to me, is SQ um, in a nutshell for a personal space that allows the music that you enjoy to Free your mind and your body of all the toxic things you've had to tolerate all day, every day. All the worries and frustrations of all the things that life presents us with. Uh, and you can sit down and enjoy music or sound of some kind that can emotionally wipe that slate clean in your mind. That's what I'm always going for. Uh, and for some people, that's Great gobs of bass, just huge amounts of bass, walls of subwoofers. For other people, it's a, a, a concerto or, or an orchestra number from, you know, Bach or Beethoven or, or whoever, a, a little flute way off in the distance. For someone else, it may be a harp. For somebody else, it may be, you know, grinding, uh, distorted rock and roll. It, it doesn't matter. Um what matters is that it gives you the emotional response that you need to work out all those problems, you know, to work through that stuff and to keep going day to day. You know, having said that, if you're trying to make an SQ competition vehicle, there are standards. Um, and their standards are typically front stage. The way the way it's it's judged is uh, is is very linear and very concrete. You know, you have to have the sound field here. The wider it is, the higher the score. The higher it is lifted up from the floor, the higher the score. You don't want to see a smiley face upside down like this, where your music sounds like it's here as it fades left to right. It goes down toward the door pods. That's a bad score. You want that music to stay flat as it fades from side to side. These are all things the judges are looking for. They're not looking for, does it take me away? Does it make me feel good? Uh, and so going from one to the other, people try to tailor a system to match uh, SQ competition specs, and they get used to hearing that sound, and they enjoy that sound. That's fine. But if you've never heard that, and all you've ever heard was, the time that you and your dad were in the 65 pickup truck and you're going to cruise it through the field, drinking your first beer, listening to some random rock song on the radio to get back to there. You just need to re-experience as much of that as possible. And that sound is going to be completely different than someone whose first experience was having a glass of wine in an opera house. Two totally different things. They're still the same emotional state. So SQ is about reproducing, in my opinion, it's about reproducing an emotion, not necessarily about reproducing a specific 
set of frequencies in a specific set of ways. You know, ultimately, my brain doesn't care whether or not a judge likes it. My brain cares whether or not I remember the first, the thing I was doing the first time I heard that song. You know, do I go back there? Am I going back there? That's the jam right there. I mean, if we're all honest, that's the jam. (laughs) Rear filth, no rear filth. Sure. Why not? Yes. Uh, Well, let's try to compete. Then things are a little bit different. You know, you got to make a judge happy, not a person. So judges aren't people. They're obviously robots. They've been trained to be robots, and they're not. They're not really human beings. So, <laughs> uh, but you think about it like this: for a competition, you're uh, you're creating a generic system, right? So, not everyone is into the 1965 Ford pickup truck going through the field sound. Not everyone is into the concerto at you know number of whatever sound. So you have to create a generic middle of the road sound and uh, a, a system that can that can reproduce all of that on an equal footing as accurately as possible. You know, and that's where the rules for SQ competitions kind of come from because you have to find some middle ground, something that's consistent with everything. If you're doing a uh, rear fill, there's basically two ways, in my opinion, to do it. One is to just go all out with it and time align it or not, uh, depending on where you want that perfect spot to be in the vehicle. Um, just a front to rear time align is probably, in my opinion, okay, because that way your driver and passenger get the whole nightclub experience. Uh, but you can focus it on that, or you can turn that volume down in the back and, and get just that ambient reflection that you're missing in the nightclub. So if there's somebody playing a band up here and the speakers are playing back this way, and you're back here listening, you're going to hear that sound coming to you. But you're also going to be hearing the sound that bounced off the wall and come back. Now, the thing about that is, is that reflected sound It's got a long way to go. It's got to go past your ear to the wall, come back from the wall, hit your ear. So it's going to be significantly delayed behind the sound. That creates an echoey ambient chamber. That's why a room with a little echo makes it feel like a really big room is because you're hearing your brain is tuned to understand that there's a big space behind you because the sound is bouncing off that wall coming back. Uh, could you reproduce that with just by putting speakers back there? Not really. <laughs> but another way of looking at it is the movie theater. You go to a movie theater, there's center channel, and then there's left and right channels, and there's subwoofers all along in there. And then they got speakers that go down the walls on both sides, all the way to the back of the theater. Sometimes they have speakers in the back of the theater, too. Well, there's how do they that's kind of magic how they make that all work but first of all they record that it's multiple channels so you've got your your left and right channels are both in front of you uh so it's still the sound stage in your car will be left and right in front of you right so the left and right channels are both still in front of you then they're creating a center channel or they have a center channel in that there'll be surround sound set up which is a different frequency it's completely and then they've got subwoofer frequencies, of course, which we do that in the car. These speakers coming down the sides are all surround sound. And uh, they're there to create different sounds than the left and right channels of your stereo channels up in the front. They're there to bring in sounds that would normally be pushed into those channels, but they're putting them around you where they would be if you were in the environment that you're experiencing. So if you're doing a surround sound... Um, set up, you have to run surround sound software in your car. You can run a, a head unit or whatever that's got uh, 6.1 or 7.1 or whatever surround sound, and you dedicate a channel to each one of those channels in your car, and you space them out. 
then you're playing back media that actually has a surround sound recording, like it's seven tracks or eight tracks or nine tracks uh, of individual, then that makes it appropriate to run a surround sound. So whenever someone says you shouldn't use rear speakers, it's mainly because they don't really make sense. Um, in your, all the music you listen to is recorded left and right. And then if you're here in the left and right channel, it's usually in front. But if you like hearing a mess, okay, and think about it like this. If you put on a pair of headphones, you're getting the sound pretty much as it was intended. But it sounds different when you take the headphones off and listen to a live stereo system in your house. It's totally different. You may appreciate that more. And what's happening is the stereo playing inside of a big space is just a mess. It's a, it's a disaster. Sound, it's a sonic disaster. But it may be a sonic disaster that you enjoy. And your brain may be able to place yourself at a point in time and a space and a happy thing that you were doing when you experienced that song played in that kind of a disaster. <laughs> That's the sound you're looking for. You know, like singing in a bathroom, singing in the shower. Hearing the sound of an organ at church versus the sound of an organ in your house. Same organ, totally different sound. But you may prefer it in a different place. And if you prefer it in the church over in your house, that means you prefer that disastrous sound mess that's made by large flat walls. That's something you enjoy. If that's something you enjoy, then, you know, trying to reproduce that kind of environment is going to make you happy. So don't get so hung up on uh, on front stage, rear fill, no rear fill. Just set it up and play it. And if you like it, kick back, take a trip back to whenever you were young and, and happy and the world was a better, different place. Peace, guys.